Hey, welcome back to the Sunday Serving Channel where you come for words of hope and truth and praise to God from the Gospels. And I was thinking, it's about time for a psalm, isn't it? I mean, the book of Psalms, they're amazing. There's so much in there. There's, there's a lot about praising and thanking God. There's a lot about crying out to God when we're in times of need or distress. And uh, pretty much any, any state you can be in, you can find a psalm that will bring comfort, that will bring hope, that will bring meaning. Um, it's very poetic language too, very uh, colorful. Um, anyways, I was looking through psalms and today for Sunday servings, let's read through Psalm 34. And apparently Psalm 34 was written by David and it was written after he, um, he had to escape Saul because Saul was angry at him. And he ran to this Philistine city called Gath and he thought that he would take refuge there. But, you know, David wasn't too popular with the Philistines because he killed Goliath, right? Apparently he even brought that sword there. So no wonder they didn't really take to him too kindly and they imprisoned him and he had to pretend, he had to fake or feign madness and then they let him go because they thought who is this idiot and they let him go. So he escaped and he ran to a cave and there some of the wild men or men that gathered around him, they were in this cave and apparently that's where he wrote the psalm. So it's, up, it's called the psalm from the cave by some people and it kind of gives his story, his testimony. Apparently it was written in acrostic fashion but I, I love this psalm, it's beautiful. So let's, let's go through it and uh, pray this psalm of David, Psalm 34. Um, it starts like this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. So just think of those few lines. I will bless the Lord at all times. So here David had just gotten away from being a prisoner and he knows it's God, it's the Lord that, that helped him. And what's his response is to bless, to bless. We don't think, we think of God blessing us, but here David is saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will thank him, I will praise him, I will bless him. And not only that, you know, we can be thankful, we can, we can thank God, but David says that his praise will continually be in my mouth. We have to say it, we have to sing it, we have to, it has to come out of our mouths that God is good, that we trust God, that we bless Him, and we praise Him. And it says that my soul makes its boast of the Lord. So boasting, that's something we think about, you know, when we take pride in something, something we're, we think was pretty cool that we did, well, tendency is to boast about it. And David here is saying, I will boast. My boast is in the Lord. And let the humble, he must have felt pretty humble at that point, let the humble hear and be glad. Let's go on. It says, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. So right there, O oh, magnify the Lord with me. That's interesting. Magnify. So you take a magnifying glass, you look through it, and it's something small, and it's bigger. You're, you're, you're making something more visible, bigger. So magnify the Lord. The Lord is big enough. We don't need to make him, we can't make him bigger, but we can, we can glorify him. We can say, look, look how great and big God is. We can magnify it. And, and David's saying, let's magnify the Lord with me. We should do it together. Let's, let's boast about the Lord. Let's say how important, how big, how strong, how powerful he is that he saves us. And I sought the Lord, he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. I love that because the biggest enemy in life is our fears. And it's God that delivers us from our fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces are never ashamed. So if you look to God, radiance from our face, our smile, our joy, is a reflection of God's light, of God's
glory of God's radiance. We are, we, it doesn't come from within. That's not me. That's not David in this case. It's the radiance comes from God, from the Lord. So if we look at God, if we understand it's God that saves us, it's God that is everything, our faces, our beings become radiant for, with God's light, with God's love, and our faces will never be ashamed. He goes on, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles, all of David's troubles. But let's think of that, of our troubles. We look to God and we cry. Crying, crying isn't fun. I don't know many people that like to cry. It's also not pretty. It's not musical. Um, but you cry out to God, God hears it. Maybe it's music to his ears. Um, so this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord and camps around all those who fear him and delivers them. I love that. The angel of the Lord. That expression is used so much in the Bible. Does it mean one powerful angel? We talked about that last week, right? When Abraham talked with God and talked with these three men. The angel of the Lord could mean multitudes of angels. It could also mean the, the presence of God. The angel, the angels, the presence of God encamps around us in times of trouble. That's, so that's not just coming and showing up and helping out or flashing that fiery sword, but encamping. So you're bringing everything along, they're there. They're setting up camp around David, around us in times of trouble. Imagine that, camps of angels, like with their tents and their stoves and everything they need. That's, that's amazing, that's a beautiful thought. So um, let me find that spot here. Um, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. So taste and see, those are senses. We can taste it. We can see it. The Lord is good. It's, it's filling our senses. It's real. So this is an invitation to, to taste the goodness of God, to see it. It is real. It saves us, all those who fear him. Again, um, blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. So this fear of the Lord, that's a different kind of fear. I think that's, that's uh, fear of the Lord is, is, is complete and deep reverence, actually joy in the mightiness of God. And uh, those who fear, in that sense, to, to really revere and understand the goodness of God have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. So the lions, um, beasts of prey, maybe it's the, the evil, might be a metaphor for evil, anything that's difficult or bad, that's coming to devour you as a snack, as a lunch. The lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. So we need to learn the fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and keep your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And that's so important. You know, we, we sometimes are tempted to speak evil of each other, um, to say things that aren't true, and that's always wrong. That's not fear of the Lord. That is not glorifying God. So David's admonishment here is don't do that. Don't speak evil. Don't speak lies. That's the worst form of evil. Turn away from that and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So even here, David was a man of war, right? He was a warrior. He led his people to, uh, to victories and glories. But seeking peace is so important, even for a warrior like David, and how much more for us today to seek peace with God and seek peace with all people to love. That power of love and of God overcomes evil and war. Seek peace and pursue it. That doesn't mean that you're perfect or good, but you seek the Lord with all your heart. You're trying to do what He commands. The righteous are the ones that care about that, the fear of the Lord, that love God, that seek peace, that love others. Then God will hear the cry of the righteous and deliver them out of all their troubles, David said. So isn't that a beautiful psalm? Psalm 34, the song from a cave, the cry out to God about seeking help. And I love that part about their faces were radiant. If we look to God, 
your face will become radiant. That radiance will shine out to others. It'll help everybody in times of distress or need or fear or sickness or whatever the problem is. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Be radiant. And uh, we'll find Delta and we'll go and see where we can be radiant on this beautiful August afternoon. Take care. See you next week. Delta! Come here. Good puppy. Sit. 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 Good dog. You're pretty radiant. All right. Let's go.